nestled in the hills above Pearl Harbor, is where our next adventure begins. Well, right now we're in Keaiwa State Park, and it's a, about a four and a half mile hike. But at the very beginning of the trail, you can't really see it, but there's a heiau, and it's an 800 year old healing school. You know, as a practitioner, I kind of feel like people are sort of called to a place for, for a purpose. So even if they were to just hike the trail, they're going to get a lot of the benefit of the healing energy without necessarily having to go into the heiau. I know that sounds really strange and esoteric, but it's sort of having faith in the way things are supposed to happen. Some people might go into the trail, finish, come back down, and then they see it, then they say, oh wait, I wanna go over there, I wanna see what it, you know, what that's all about. The only thing that we suggest people to do is, if you're gonna enter the heiau, just stand at the entrance, like you're going into somebody's house, and ask for permission. Just, may I please enter, however you wanna do that in your heart, and then treat it like any other place, like a, a church or a, or a hospital. You don't like run on the couches and the furniture and sit in the pews. You respect the environment. Every rock here has a job. And if you try to take it from its job, it's going to be out of harmony. So that's what's going to cause you to have what would look like bad luck is that you've taken something from its job and it wants to get back to its job. Again, that sounds kind of esoteric, but if you just think about it in terms of respect, if you try to take a kid from its house, it's going to fight you. So it's sort of the same, the same energy. The name Kea Eva means the mystery or the mysterious. It was named after a man, and like that was his name. Like his name was the mystery or mysterious. And I thought that's a really funny and appropriate name because a lot of times that's what people will say God is. God is the mystery, God is mysterious and works in ways that we don't understand. This place does that. Like it has a lot of really healing properties that I think people don't really pay attention to because we're mostly intellectual beings in the modern world. We're not really as sentient as we could be. We don't really experience life on a feeling level. Um, and just trying to bring that back, I think, is, is part of the journey. So the reason we bring people to Kea Eva is because of the energy that's here. So it's a piece of flat land on a mountaintop. So flat land, mountaintop, so we have Hina and Ku, or masculine and feminine energy in harmony. And it's that harmony that we're utilizing because every human being is, is nature, right? We won't even say we're a part of nature, we are nature. We're like little ecosystems and ecosystems want to be in, in balance. And so this place facilitates bringing a person back into harmony So my teacher's name was Melvin Coila Clark, and we just usually called him Coila. Always we begin with respect, and Coila was that kind of a person. He would always teach us about what is the most respectful thing to do first before we entered a given situation. Right? It doesn't mean he couldn't be kolohe, it doesn't mean he couldn't be rascal, he couldn't have fun with it. It just meant that's, that's the first thing we had to think about, like what's respectful. He was a very interesting character because he was an art professor. He trained in Japan under three national treasures and he has a really close affinity with the Japanese culture. He was the master potter at the Chosenji Temple in Kalihi Valley under Tonoi Roshi. And that was kind of part of his reason for taking on some Japanese students was he wanted to repay the Roshi, but he also felt like he wanted to complete Kalakawa's idea of uniting Japan and Hawaii. I was working at a place, the kahuna came to bless it. I started talking to him. I happened to need somebody to teach me how to do a wedding. And so I asked him and he agreed. And then a buddy of mine needed to do a wedding. So I said, can I bring him along? 
he actually hanaid the two of us. Like he, what that means is he adopted two, two of us into his family because both of us were not ethnically Hawaiian. He wanted people to come from their hearts. You know, in the olden days, if you cured somebody, they give you their best horse. Nobody's gonna give me their car, right? Nobody's gonna say, wow, you saved my life, here's my car. You know, in the end, the reality is the world changes and Hawaiians were very adaptive. Like I hear a lot of people in my generation, I'm 53 right now, their elders told them, don't study the old ways, go to school. I don't think they had this intention of, of cutting off the traditions. I, I, I feel like they were just trying to get people to adapt into their situation with the least amount of internal conflict, again, the lokahi, as possible. The problem with that is when you cut off parts of yourself, those parts are going to start to make some noise and it's going to feel like discontent. It's going to feel uneasy. That uneasiness is something that we spend a lot of time trying to restore within people because we'll project that out into the world as this is the reason I don't feel good. That's the reason I don't feel good. It's because this thing over here or that person or this job or whatever. And maybe fundamentally we have to come back and ask, am I just out of balance within myself and why? My source has to come from the creator and say, maybe you don't understand why I'm suggesting that you do this or don't do this, but there's a purpose for every single action or inaction when you're surrendering to the divine power. So like it's starting to rain. And for a lot of people, you know, we're gonna run for cover, but rain for Hawaiians is a blessing. Oftentimes I'm doing work in the rain and, you know, and people look at me like, are we gonna get out of the rain? Or like, well, if you get out of the rain, you're not gonna receive the, the full blessing. So we, we tend to just get used to the getting wet <laughs> and staying, staying like in this kind of weather and just kind of being happy about it, you know, and not looking at it as a bad thing. Stress is a survival response to a threat, right? So cortisol level goes up, blood pressure goes up, you know, a lot of things happen physiologically as a response to a threat. Part of what's really hard is catching yourself responding before it snowballs into something bigger than it was. Just come back to your na'al, take some breaths. And we're not just talking about air. In the Hawaiian tradition, it's basically Holy Spirit because it's the breath of life. Now, if you think about it, the sun just shines. That's what it's doing, right? If you want to be warm, you go outside into the sun and you receive it. Right? So if you're just shining your aloha, you don't have to give it. Somebody can just receive it and it's up to them. So when you're in that spirit, you are embodying the peace, tranquility of heaven, the love. Just changing that focus helps you get away from the stress that's around you. It is a lot harder than it sounds, so I completely understand, but try.